I'd like to thank NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Today we're going to look at the limit from the Mean Girls movie. So in particular, we're going to find the limit as x goes to zero of the natural log of one minus x minus sine x over one minus cosine squared of x. And we're actually going to evaluate this two different ways. The first way will be using L'Hopital's rule and the notion of one-sided limits. And the second way will be by taking a Taylor or a Maclaurin expansion of the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so let's get into this first method. So maybe before we apply L'Hopital's rule, let's notice that this denominator, one minus cosine squared, can easily be written as sine squared using the Pythagorean trig identity. So that means we have the limit as x goes to zero, the natural log of one minus x minus sine of x over sine squared of x. And now if we like plug x equals zero into the numerator and the denominator, you'll notice that in the numerator, we get the natural log of one minus the sine of zero. Natural log of one is zero, sine of zero is zero. And then in the denominator, we get the sine squared of zero, but that's also zero. So we have an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. So like I just alluded to, that motivates us to use L'Hopital's rule which let's recall L'Hopital's rule says that this sort of limit has the same behavior as the limit of the quotient of the derivative of these two functions. So that means that the behavior of this limit is the same thing as the behavior of the limit as x goes to zero of, so let's take the derivative of the numerator so the derivative of natural log will be like 1 over 1 minus x, but then we pick up a minus sign because of the chain rule. I'll let that change the order of subtraction, leaving us with 1 over x minus 1. Then the derivative of sine is cosine, so we get minus cosine of x. Then we've got to use the chain rule for sine squared as well. That'll give us 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. Okay, so now let's see what happens. As x approaches zero here, we get one over negative one minus one, so that's negative two in the numerator. Then as x approaches zero in the denominator, we get two times zero times one, so that'll be zero. So no longer do we have an indeterminate form. We've got a finite number over zero situation, which motivates either this limit does not exist or it's infinite. But we'll show that it does not exist, which was the solution given in the movie, and we'll do that by taking one-sided limits. So let's take the limit as x goes to zero from above of one over x minus one minus the cosine of x. And since the limit of the numerator is just not equal to zero, it's equal to negative two. Even if we go to x from above, since this is continuous at zero, this is gonna trend off towards negative two. Then this two sine of x, cosine of x, as x goes to zero from above, well, cosine is essentially equal to one because cosine of zero is one, and then sine is approaching zero, but it's approaching zero from above because sine of positive numbers a little bit bigger than zero are positive. So this goes to, maybe I'll put plus zero. So since this goes to negative two over plus zero, that gives us motivation for this one side limit to be negative infinity. Great, and now we can do the same sort of analysis on the other sided limit. So the limit as x goes to zero from below of one over x minus one minus cos x over to sine of x cos x. So let's see, this numerator is still trending off towards negative two, whereas now this denominator is trending off towards what I'll call negative zero. So what I mean by that is that it approaches zero, but the values of zero it approaches along are all negative. That's because sine of something a little bit smaller than zero is negative. But that means that this will approach positive infinity. 
So that means from one side, this limit approaches negative infinity. The other side approaches positive infinity, which says this limit does not exist. Okay, so now let's maybe sketch away real quickly how to do this using Taylor series. I travel quite a bit for conferences and research collaborations, and as such, I find myself using public Wi-Fi quite often. Using NordVPN puts my mind at ease knowing that I am protected from potential nefarious actors on the internet. NordVPN is super easy to use. You can have a zero-click method or a one-click method. You might say, well, a zero-click method, that means I'm not doing anything. But in fact, there's an auto-connect setup that you can do so that it's just always connected automatically. It's great. NordVPN also has 5,500 servers in 59 different countries. And you can choose which server to connect to. If you want faster speeds, you could connect to a close by server. But if you want to open region locked content, then you can uh, connect to a server in the country of your choice. NordVPN has been confirmed by speed tests to be the fastest VPN. It's so fast that I don't even notice any slowdown at all when I have it connected. Finally, NordVPN is available on every platform. Windows, Android, Android for TVs, iOS, Mac OS, and even Linux. You can use it on essentially anything. I've got great news, everyone. NordVPN is offering my subscribers a 30-day money-back guarantee and four months free with a two-year subscription. So there's really no risk, not like surfing the internet without a VPN, so go ahead and go over there right now and sign up at nordvpn.com slash Michael Penn. And now back to the video. So now we're going to do a quick sketch, maybe not a careful solution, of the evaluation of this limit using Taylor series. And we'll kind of use the knowledge that the Taylor series for the natural log of 1 minus x has a certain form, which is generally, generally taught in a Calculus 2 class. Same with sine and, well, we'll work out sine squared as well. And I'll like skip that first step where we use the trigonometric identity. Okay, so this will give us the limit as x goes to zero of, so this is gonna be minus the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of x to the n plus one over n plus one. So that's the Taylor series for the natural log function just given that the Taylor series for one over one minus X, that's a geometric series. And then we take the antiderivative. And then from that, we subtract the sum as N goes from zero up to infinity of, let's see, this is gonna be minus one to the N. And then we have X to the two N plus one over two N plus one factorial. And then in the denominator, we have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the same thing, minus one to the n, and then x to the two n plus one over two n plus one factorial. And now here's where we're gonna start playing it fast and loose. We're just gonna take the first two terms from all of these expansions. So here we've got the limit as x goes to zero of, so this will be negative x minus x squared over two. So like I said, that's the first two terms from that expansion. And then we'll have minus x plus x cubed over three factorial, which is six. So that's the first two terms from that expansion. And then downstairs, we'll have x minus x cubed over 6 quantity squared. So again, the first two terms there. Okay, so let's see how this simplifies. So in the numerator, well, let's bring our limit over. So in the numerator, we have minus 2x and then minus x squared over 2 and then plus x cubed over 6. And then we can multiply out the denominator and give us x squared minus x to the fourth over three. That's what we get from the cross terms. And then plus x to the six over 36. So something like that. And then from here, we can factor an x out of the numerator and the denominator and cancel. 
that leaves us with the limit as x goes to 0 of negative 2 minus x over 2 plus x squared over 6 all over x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the 6 or x to the 5 over 36. Now let's notice as x goes to zero, these guys in the numerator and the denominator won't really contribute anything because they're not like the leading terms in the numerator and the denominator, giving us the limit as x goes to zero of negative two over x. But of course, as x goes to zero from above, that's gonna turn off to negative infinity. And then as x trend and then as x trends to zero from below, that's gonna trend off towards positive infinity because the two minus signs cancel. So like I said, this is like kind of a little bit of a sketchy way to do it, but I think it's kind of illuminating to see both of these, and that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.